CBS senior college hoops writer Matt Norlander joining us to set the stage. Matt, before we get into the seeds and some of the individual matchups, let's start where the committee might have gotten it wrong. Biggest snub in your eyes is who? Yeah, listen, we are 24 hours plus removed from Selection Sunday, but I got to be honest, in talking with uh, a few coaches around the country throughout the day on Monday, which has also been a big day with coaching news and, and, and changeover, uh, Texas A&M just keeps coming up. People are surprised that the, uh, that the Aggies didn't, that didn't do enough. But basically, it comes down to the fact that the Selection Committee did not reward performance in the conference tournament at the level where people thought. And I remain a little bit stumped. I mean, Texas A&M finished its season with four quad one wins. It was undefeated in quad two, nine and 10 overall. That's a better quad one, quad two combined record by win percentage than a lot of other teams that got in that were on the bubble. Two quad three losses ultimately hurt them. Uh, my, my primary takeaway is that the selection committee uh, really needs to send a more emphatic message about how little the Sunday tournament championship games mean, because especially with the SEC, Joe, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. Uh, but also, I, I will just note this. It's not absolutely egregious. I'm surprised by it. I would have had a and in the field and I would have had Notre Dame out. I actually have a hard time justifying putting in Notre Dame. But we've had many worse decisions in the past. And uh, a bigger miss, for example, was, you know, Tennessee getting a three instead of a two with this. But if there was one team, it was A&M was the big snub this year. And it wasn't just because it just missed. A&M was the fourth team off the mark behind the likes of of Dayton SMU and others. Yeah, it's a hard pill to swallow some head scratchers out there in the committee making it clear as you said that that Sunday those Saturday those final conference championship games don't mean as much as maybe we make them out to mean. Uh, let's take a run at the one seeds here. Gonzaga, Arizona, Baylor and Kansas. Matt, did the committee nail this at least and who's got the biggest argument to be made for a one line that didn't end up there? Oh, yeah, no, the committee got this. In fact, I'd, I'd argue the past five or six tournaments we've had haven't had as much clarity about the one line as as this year. There's really no argument for anyone else. Kentucky lost its argument when it failed to advance to the SEC championship game, which would have put it there. But this is this is clear cut. I mean, Gonzaga, number one overall seed. Arizona, clearly the number two in line. Kansas, clearly the number three. When you looked at it, it had more quad one wins and combined quad one and quad two than anyone. And then Baylor's resume stacked up well versus the likes of, you know, Kentucky, mm -hmm. Villanova, Auburn, and really Tennessee, which was the other one that should have been there, not Duke. But no, I mean, the one seeds are good. And, uh, and I don't really have a problem with it, to be, to be honest, overall. I think they got it done, and we'll see uh, how far they advance. I will tell you this. We're not going to have all four one seeds make the Final Four. It's only happened once in 2008. This is a stacked field, and I'd be genuinely shocked if all four one seeds made it to the Big Easy. Beware the chalk when filling out your bracket. Only so much time to do so. First four action beginning on Tuesday with the round of 64, then tipping up on Thursday and Friday. As you take stock of the tidal waves of games coming our way, Matt, where do your eyes go first in the first round? You know what? Murray State San Francisco is what I'm going to pick here again. Listen, I've mentioned it on the podcast and I talked about it throughout the day on Monday. I'm sorry. It's going to have to be this game. I've, I've spoken with uh, with the uh, with the coaching staff at both of these spots here and uh, they're really excited to get to this, this challenge. It stinks for mid majors that they get pitted against each other. There's really no reason why Murray State as a seven couldn't have played Miami as a 10. And then San Francisco as a 10 couldn't play, say, USC as a 7. I don't get why we can't do that. Uh, but what we get here is an extremely urgent game. How, uh, how about this? You have Murray State and USC. These are, these are mid-major programs. And, Joe, what channel are these pro programs going to play on later this week? CBS. That's right. They didn't put them on True TV. Didn't put them on TBS or TNT. Big CBS because this is a fantastic matchup. I can't wait to watch this game. Uh, I have Murray State winning, but I'm just letting you know. I, I am allowed to change this before we get to this game, and I, 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 I might be talking myself into flipping this and taking San Francisco, all so right. buyer beware, that's all. The situation is always fluid. We will leave that door open for you, Matt. Uh, plenty of conversation, as you said, on the Ion College Basketball Podcast regarding some seating decisions by the committee. In respect to the real contenders, which region offers the lightest draw? Like, the best route to cutting down the nets belongs to who? You know what? I think it's to Kansas. Uh, Kansas, with its draw in the Midwest, I think has the most favorable run. Now, there's a potential pitfall. If Kansas were to meet in the Sweet 16, the five seed here is Iowa. That's tricky. I can see Iowa getting past Kansas, but I think it's got the easiest 8-9, San Diego State Creighton. On the bottom half, Auburn has been fading as of late as a two seed. It's got Wisconsin, 
which ranks poorly, well outside. It's a three seed and it's not even a top 30 Ken Palm team. Providence is not a top 45 Ken Palm team. That's the four in this region overall. Bill Self has done a very good job in the tournament over the years. Now, Kansas fans will hear that and say, Norlander, what are you talking about? <laughs> there have been instant. Here's the problem. Kansas has made the NCAA tournament as a number one seed on herself nine times, okay? That's outrageous. That is a level, of the, there's, there is no parallel basically since self took over for teams getting to the one line that frequently. And so when you make a, the tournament as a one seed, the expectation is you live up to your seed. If you're a one seed, that means you go to the final four. And yes, Kansas has been tripped up plenty of times there, but, um, but they're in the tournament every year. They're a number one, number two, or number three seed almost every single year under self. And I think this year, the bracket broke their way. They're not guaranteed. I want to be clear about this. I just think of all the ones, it seems obvious Kansas has the easiest potential path to make it to New Orleans. A necessary disclaimer there as the uh, announcer's curse could be looming for Rock Chalk. You know, we always got to take a look at things by the numbers here on HQ as well, Matt. As you peruse some of these first round spreads, is there a game that stands out to you as a real opportunity to start things off on the right note? I, this is an easy one, but listen, I get hit, hit up asking, what's the lock of the first round? I, see, I, it's, it's, Matt, I, I, I hesitate to use that term. I know in the rundown might be, might be lock of the first round. I agree. But that, feels, that feels like we're setting you up for disaster. So maybe, give us maybe a game you that are, you love. I, maybe not a lock, but a game you love. Uh, this is just in terms of point spread. Mm -hmm. Gonzaga only has to travel down to Portland. It's going to face a Georgia State team that is flying diagonally all the way across the country. OK, and I don't see how Georgia State is going to be able to keep this game close. Gonzaga has proven plenty of times over the years as a highly seeded team in that first round. Not always. It got a scare. I was there in person in 2014, 2013, when Southern actually scared Gonzaga in his first ever year as a one seed. But normally first round, Gonzaga takes care of business. I think it's going to win by 30 plus. I, re I know it's a big number. I actually mm -hmm. think it's such a big number. People will be scared by it. Don't be. Embrace that. Gonzaga will blow him out of the water. Biggest on the board, but Matt Norland are not scared away. All right, I'll use the four-letter word. Throw out the numbers. Give us a tournament lock, a team that you love to just make a deep run into the thing. Okay, again, this is a broad lock for me. <laughs> you look at how the bottom half of the Midwest breaks up for Auburn. See, Auburn has not been great in the past few weeks. People are maybe going to be winning, willing and ready to fade the Tigers. I... They're going to play the winner of USC Miami. I'm not in on either of those teams. USC has like one legitimate win this season. LSU and Iowa State are the 6 11 in that bottom half. Iowa State has faded hard and can't score. LSU doesn't even have its head coach anymore. I, I think Colgate's got a chance to beat Wisconsin, by the way. Now that game's in Milwaukee, so we'll see. I just like Auburn's chances a lot with its talent. Walker Kessler was the best defensive player in the country this year. Jabari Smith might be the first pick in this year's NBA draft. I'm going to say Auburn is a lock, or as close as you can be, to make the Elite Eight. Go in on that. I just think that bot that's the worst. Like, each of these regions have a top half and a bottom half, so there are eight halves overall, if you get what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. I think that's the worst section, worst, worst half of any part of the bracket there. Auburn got a little bit of a gift. I think it gets on to the Elite Eight. Matt Norlander, always ready for the tough questions here on HQ. Thank you. Thank you. And the conversation continues. No better time of year to join it. The Eye on College Basketball podcast. Download, subscribe, and follow today for all the latest breaking news, tournament information, everything you need to fill out your bracket is right there with the best in the business. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.